Recently, I have been attending Mr. Reinhardt through a crucial period of mental despondency. For some time now, he's been suffering a great deal of anxiety and depression over questions concerning his purpose in life. Also, he's extremely paranoid that people are trying to hurt him and that he can no longer defend himself. At this very moment, his situation has become so aggravated that he refuses to speak to anyone unless they can be reproduced by artificial means so that no threat of physical injury exists. After considerable research, the context of which became this film, I have concluded that Mr. Reinhardt suffers from a serious condition of misplaced priorities. In this film, you will observe a cross-section of people who are familiar with my patient but know nothing about his present condition. I asked them all to respond to questions pertaining to Mr. Reinhardt's character and, in some cases, his talents and skills as a filmmaker. Now it's time for you, my colleagues, to share in these personal insights. Bill Reinhardt makes films because he's a very thrifty person. And having bought a camera and having, like, a, I've seen it personally, a whole box full of film, he would really be non-thrifty, he'd really be reckless, he'd be financially probably insolvent because he wouldn't be using it, he wouldn't be putting it to use, wouldn't be trying to trying to make it work for him, you see, and that's why Bill Ryan makes movies. He makes films, documentaries, also because I think he's a compulsive individual, he's got this compulsion to use a camera, a compulsion to use the film. He enjoys Lionel model trains. He set up an entire layout in my attic last year and played with these trains endlessly. At the same time, he was uh, a disc jockey at uh, Slabtown uh, Discotheque. He's a filmmaker. He's a weaver of images and sound. He, he worked at KBOO as the uh, producer of the Radio Lab, which was the famous psychedelic cornucopia that happened every midnight, and there were loyal fans that gathered around their radios to hear the only really good music that was being played in Portland, Oregon during the late 60s and early 70s. He's a lover of, of beautiful things, especially beautiful women, but he, he's concerned with quality, and that's, I think that's what distinguishes him from most people that I know. He's, he's a person that loves detail and is a perfectionist. He's also a real pervert. I think he'll be making um, some really uh, strange movies along those lines soon. He hasn't really gotten around to it yet. He's not perverted. He's safe. He's safe. He's kind of... He's cute. He's got a little rabbit kind of face. A little, little narrow little face that's sweet. Nice teeth. He gives good camera. He's one of my very best friends, but I don't know anything about him. Because he's always on the other side of the camera, even when he's not on the other side of the camera. Bill Reinhardt uh, uh, makes films because he's basically insecure. He's probably a strikeout artist. I've heard that he gets more ass than a toilet seat, but I can hardly believe it, you know what I mean? Uh, I think he, uh, he's seen in the presence of beautiful women quite often, but... Uh, whether or not he's uh, really getting uh, getting anything is is you know questionable. Bill's a pretty funny person. He's um, very entertaining to be with. Makes me laugh. He's very imaginative and um, creative person. Comes out in his films a lot. I like his films. Every time I see his films, I get really surprised as to where they come from because it seems like he hides so much of himself. I was thinking of putting out a, a warning to all women, too, to stay away from him, because he definitely is a stud. But I have a lot of good feelings about Bill. Sometimes I think that, that I'd like more from him in the way of a friend. But then I don't think he's capable of giving that kind of friendship to me 
or to very few people. He likes women, that's for sure. I never got out with him once where he didn't have 14 women mothering him. That's because he looks so innocent when you first meet him, I guess. That innocence doesn't last very long. Yeah, I roomed with Bill Reinhardt about two years ago, man. And the thing that was so amazing was the number of women he used to have up for that place. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And he was a disc jockey at the time, and uh, he'd come back from his morning show, you know, and he'd have a different girl under his arm, you know, each day of the week. And uh, then he'd come back after the afternoon show, and he'd have another woman under his arm. I, I mean, in a given week, there maybe were eight, nine, ten different women who he'd be taking up to the place, you know? Yeah. Just really unbelievable to uh, to watch. Uh, even one time I remember, you know, uh, there was he brought a woman back after the morning show, and she was up crashing in the attic. And while she was asleep, taking a nap, um, like he brought another woman back, you know, like in the evening. And like the woman who was up in the attic didn't know that Bill was downstairs with the woman who was brought back, and uh, he managed to get. The woman down on the first floor out before the woman from the attic even woke up. I mean, that's, I mean, it was just complete manipulation. It was unbelievable. I don't know. I suppose about the only thing I could say about Bill Reinhardt and have it coincide would be <sighs> ego. He had a lot of ego. I personally think it's because he didn't eat meat. He is a real health food fanatic and has a real taboo against anything unhealthy. I think it would be simply wonderful to get Bill in a position, strapped to a chair or something where he couldn't move, and apply him with bra sugar and <laughs> Cheetos and Twinkies and... Bill's a paradox, like us all. He He's very strict with his diet. He's been a vegetarian for a long time. And at the same time, he'll stay out till 3, 4, 5 in the morning debauching himself. Uh, he's very concerned with physical fitness. He lifts weights. He punches a punching bag. Uh, but I, I think that the distinguishing feature about Bill is that he's able to combine disparate elements into a, a new unity. And I think the place where this shows up the clearest is in his music and in his films. At the same time, though, some of his ideas are so off the wall. Oh, my God. He actually has yeah, ideas. Yeah, he tries. I don't think he has ideas. I don't think you can actually say that. I, Why? Th I, things are so abstract? Etymologically, an idea is... It has to derive from a process that, I don't know, that you just He's don't see in right now. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. This really like it. It has flashes mm -hmm. rather than ideas. Intuitions, passions, uh, what's the other thing? Instincts.